Mary, this is the reason for the season only, Jesus Christ, <laughs> Christmas. <coughs> Welcome everyone to <coughs> this morning, whether you're in person or online, and uh, I'll say it like it's supposed to be. Merry Christmas to everyone this morning. Merry, Merry Christmas. A few announcements. Uh, our service tonight at 6 o'clock. Uh, invite everyone out for the candlelight service. Um, and then next week we will have New Year's Eve service and then a New Year's Eve uh, communion service at 6 o'clock. Sorry, I didn't get time to look through this before him. I should have, but I didn't. Um, don't forget our uh, Methodist men will be in our be doing a fundraising uh, the seventh, uh, which is our traditional Christmas our Christmas we got Christmas on the brunt. New Year's Eve service or uh, luncheon. So put that on your date book, and we'll hopefully see you there. Appreciate your support. Is there any other announcements that anyone needs to make this morning? Again, it's great to have everyone here. Let us begin with prayer. If you will, bow your head and join me, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Christmas Eve, and especially for Christmas, for your birth, for the salvation that you brought us, for a way to get out of this world and to an eternal home with you. We just thank you for the blessings that you give us, for the blessings that's on this church. We ask for your continued support to lead and guide us in all that we say and do, that it be for your kingdom, for your glory, and for most of all, to spread your word, your gospel, to this world, a broken world that needs it so desperately. This morning, if there's anyone here or listening that doesn't have a personal relationship with you, I hope that something today, some word, some action, something moves each and every individual to a personal relationship with you for a better life, for an eternal home. So lead, guide, and direct us in all that we say and do here today and in the days to come. For we ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Now, if you would give your attention to Who would have thought that it was possible for me, a lowly shepherd, to be visited by angels and be the first to hear the good news of the birth of Jesus Christ? It started out as a night like any other night, just long hours of watching sheep and making sure they don't wander off or get attacked by a wild animal. And the more long hours of trying to stay warm and trying to stay awake, so we didn't have any trouble staying awake once they appeared. I guess we did cause quite a stir. But we had wonderful news to tell, straight from the Heavenly Father himself. God sent legions of us to announce the birth of his Son, the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ. It is ironic that only a few shepherds heard this marvelous news, even though it was the greatest message the world has ever heard. Let me tell you, I have never felt more love than we the shepherds did that night. Love for a God who would send his son to earth to be like one of us. Love for the magnificence of the angels who sang the most beautiful song of praise imaginable. 
love for that little boy we found in a stable in Bethlehem, just as the angels had said. Love for his sweet mother and his kind father, who let us share the intimate time with them, and love for one another after sharing that experience. The story that we shared that night is the same story that we still share today, the world over. God is love. We may not awake you in the middle of the night with a blinding light and heavenly harmonies, but we continually praise the God who loved his children enough to send them a Savior. A little baby who would grow up to teach them and touch them, serve them and heal them lead them, and love them. That is the God we sang about over 2,000 years ago and still sing about today. Thank you, Donna and Ronnie, for your advanced reading. You look, uh, you look like real men. <laughs> I'd like to, uh, this time, I'd like to start our worship service. I'd like to invite all of you to the call to worship, opening hymn, and opening prayer. Call to worship. Host of host, from sunrise to sunrise, and generation to generation, we are your people. You have been with us wherever we have gone. You will be with us wherever we may go. <clears throat> you planted us in a land following with milk and honey. Then you plant, planted our salvation in Mary's womb. Jesus, who is the Christ, is planted firmly in each one of us. Our souls magnify the Holy One. Our spirits rejoice in God, our Savior. Amen. Would you rise? Let's praise God together with the hymn number 218. It came upon us, leaving I am clear. <laughs>
dollar opening prayer. Beloved the Holy Lord, we welcome you to our house, the sacred space we have built to gather together as your place. Here we come to offer you our thanksgiving and praise in response to the abundance of your creation. Here we come to share with you all our prayers of confession and petition, for they lie heavy on our hearts. And even knowing that you are here and everywhere, we come longing to hear you say, I am with you always. Amen. And as you told us, now we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, now let's thank our neighbors for a friendly way and share this simple but powerful message. God loves you and Merry Christmas. God loves you. Merry Christmas. So do I. God loves you. So do I. Uh, I'd like to invite the children to come forward for the young Christian time. Please come forward. Good morning. First of all, I want to tell you what a good job you did last Sunday in your children's program. I really enjoyed that. Did you have a good time? Did you like doing that? Well, I'm going to tell you, start out with a little funny story about a Christmas play. There were three little boys, and they were playing the parts of the three wise men. The first boy came in, and he brought his gift, and he said, I am bringing the baby Jesus gold. The second little boy came in and handed, laid down his gift, and he said, I am bringing the baby Jesus gold. Myrrh. The third little boy came in with his gift, and he laid it down, and he said, Well, I don't know what's in this box, but Frank sent this. <laughs> <coughs> I know you're all thinking about gifts tonight, aren't you? Presents at Christmas, that's exciting. Do you know why we give presents to each other at Christmas? Could it be because the wise men brought gifts to baby Jesus? Yes. Good job. Good answer. They brought their gifts of gold and myrrh and frankincense. And Jesus was actually God's gift to us, to the whole world. God gave us the gift of Jesus. And the wise men brought gifts for baby Jesus. And to show our love for other people, we give gifts too. Have you ever thought about what you would give Jesus if you could give him a gift? There's a Christmas song called um, Carol of the Drums. And it's about, oh, it's the little drummer boy. And it's a little boy who doesn't have anything to give baby Jesus but to play his drum for him. Do you think Jesus would like uh, Legos, or books, or puzzles, or things, or clothes, or pajamas, or socks, those, th those things? Well, I have something in this box that I bet would make Jesus very happy. Would you like to see it? Okay, all right. I want you to look carefully, one at a time, 
and keep it a secret, okay? All right. Remember, this is a gift for Jesus. Okay? What is that? Mary. Okay. Do you see what's in the box? What's in the box? Mary. It's a mirror. But what do you see in the mirror? <laughs> What do you see when you look directly <coughs> into the mirror? Dead. Is it you? Are you in that mirror? No, dead. <laughs> when you look in a mirror, you see your own reflection, don't you? <laughs> this gift is you. Jesus wants your whole heart, your whole mind, all of you. He doesn't need things. He wants your love, your devotion, and your praise. And that's something we that we all can give him, and it doesn't cost a thing. Will you bow with me and pray together? Dear Lord. Dear Lord. Thank you for the best gift. Thank you for the best gift. The world has ever received. The world has ever received. Help us to share this gift. Help us to share this gift. And not keep it to ourselves. And not keep it to ourselves. Amen. 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 Thank you. Merry, Merry Christmas. Thank you, Donna, for your Christian time. Um, uh, today, today we will have a special offering time, a name with love plate our neighbors in need around us uh, this Christmas uh, season. So let's share the love of Christ with our neighbors. Uh, your uh, generous offering will be used to help our neighbors in need around us. Uh, so uh, can, uh, Hal and uh, Rob, would you help uh, to pass the uh, uh, to pass the open plate to our congregation. Stand and all for our gift to God with joy and thanksgiving.
God has given us. Please take it and use it for your kingdom and for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Senior group, Sunshine Club, I'll give you a minute. We'll be meeting at uh, their hometown place to Catawba this week at Thursday at 11 30, so don't forget that. Uh, and you don't have to be really old to come join us. Bring a neighbor, bring a friend. We have a good time. The sunshine shines on everybody. Yeah, that's right. Oh, who is this? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I can't get it right. I'm going to share a song with you this morning that we don't hear much at Christmas time, but it has a really cool backstory to it. It just so happened in 1933 a traveling um, folklorist named John Jacob was out towards Murphy and he bumped into a traveling evangelist who was also there camped out in the town square and kind of making a nuisance of himself and the town was wanting to run this evangelist out but he had to do one more um, tent revival service to get enough money to, to leave, to have gas. And as he was there um, talking with this evangelist, the little girl came out and she started singing the first verse of this song. And uh, John Jacob was a musician and so he took this song and um, created it into what we know today as I wonder as I wander. And, you know, it is true when we think about the whole story of the nativity, why God sent Jesus to die. So think about it as we share this this morning. Service is over. Don't be in too big a hurry to rush off. We got a little something going on. 
take care of. So it's going to take but a minute. It ain't going to throw you lunch too far behind. So. With all that said, now let us turn to the worshiping part of this service and hear the words it, from God's Word. And listen to Mary's song of praise. Reading from Luke 1, verses 46b through 55. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will, come, will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has shattered the proud with the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his, his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. According to the promise he made to his ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. This is the word of God for the people of the world. Thanks be to God. for your scripture reading and once again thank you baby and Hassan for your wonderful special music for worship service um, let us pray before we share the last message <clears throat> gracious and loving God as we gather in this fourth uh, week of Advent our hearts are filled with anticipation and joy as we await the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We are reminded of the love and hope that His birth uh, brings to our lives. Lord, we lift up to You those among us who are not well. Be with them, Lord, in their time of sickness. Grant them comfort, strength, and the assurance of Your healing touch. Bless those who care for them, provided that, providing them with wisdom, patience, and strength as they look for their loved one. Uh, dear Lord, we also bring the children and youth of our church before you. May they feel your love sur surrounding them, and may they grow in grace and understanding of your teachings. Bless their families and teachers as they guide them in the nurturing these young hearts in the ways of faith. As we approach New Year, we pray that our church will be a place of peace and blessing. May we be united in love and purpose, surround, spreading your light in, your, uh, in our community. Grant us the wisdom to discern your will and the courage to follow it faithfully. Lord, our heart aches for those who suffer from the devastating effects of war around the world during this Christmas season. We pray that your grace may be with them, bringing comfort to the afflicted and strength to those who work for peace. In the quiet moment of our prayers, we also bring to you uh, our personal desires, trusting that you share the desire of our hearts. May your grace abound in our lives and fill, our, fill, with, uh, fill us with hope, joy, and the peace that surpasses all understanding. Lord, as we prepare to listen the sermon open our minds and hearts to receive your word. May the message spoken today resonate within us and guide us in our journey of faith. We offer this prayer with gratitude for your boundless love which sustains us through all seasons. 
In the name of Jesus, our Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, I pray that we will experience God's grace and peace while we are sharing God's message this morning. Uh, today we are reading from the book of book of Luke in chapter one. This passage is often called Mary's song of praise. Mary is praising God after she heard some important news from the angel Gabriel. She is told that she will have a baby named Jesus as a virgin. Uh, this is what we call the Annunciation. Considering the custom of hot Mary's time, Mary was probably about 16 years old when she was married to Joseph. She could have been uh, embarrassed, uh, embarrassed <clears throat> or even frightened to know that she she's having a baby as a virgin. It's a lot for young girl to handle. Despite that, she listened to the, to the angel's message and obeyed, uh, even giving praise and glory to God. Today, uh, let's explore the profound meaning uh, behind Mary's song of praise. And I hope that her beautiful song can inspire our own praise God in our lives. Consider a moment when you began a task with confidence only to encounter doubt along the way. Have we ever started to do something feeling sure and confident, but then along the way you started to doubt yourself? We may feel anxious and unsure about the decision we have made. Mary to face the uncertainty when she accepted the news of her divine pregnancy. Maybe she was worried about being pregnant while not being married. Or perhaps she was afraid of what the people uh, around her would think if they found out. Uh, so, to, fi uh, to find <coughs> solace, uh, Mary uh, decided to visit her relatives, Elizabeth. Gabriel had mentioned Elizabeth's miraculous pregnancy to Mary. Uh, this may uh, have been done in order to convince Mary of God's ability, uh, even saying, now, no word from God will ever fail. You can find the story in verse 36. <clears throat> the angel said that even though Elizabeth was old, she was going to have a baby, and she was already, uh, uh, she was already six months pregnant. When Mary arrived to meet with Elizabeth, uh, an amazing thing happened. Elizabeth's baby in her belly seemed to be jumping or dancing with joy. This is not something for a mom to be usually experiences. Elizabeth can feel her baby's happiness and tells Mary, You are truly blessed. This moment reassured Mary, strengthening her confidence. When someone is comforted for the second time, it means they feel even more sure than before. So Mary's uh, heart filled with joy and she expresses this joyful feeling through song in today's scripture. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, turning to the scripture, in verses 46 to 47, Mary sings, uh, Oh, how my soul praises the Lord! How my spirit rejoices in God my Savior! In this verse, the word 
uh, praises is also sometimes uh, translated as uh, exalt or magnify. Uh, let's look at other Bible verses to understand what <coughs> praise means in verse 46. Uh, it's the same Greek word, but it's used with a different meaning in the Bible. In Philippians chapter 1, verse 20, it says, eagerly uh, expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage, so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. Uh, this reveals that praising God is the same as exalting Him. Mary's song emphasizes the call for believers to live lives that exalt God. So what does it mean to live a life that exalt the Lord? It involves magnifying Jesus Christ in our actions and words. It's when the truth and vitality of Christ spread through our lives to our neighbors. This truth aren't just for us. They meant to be shared with others through our lives. Living a life that exalts the Lord is not just about knowing the truth. It is about sharing the truth with others. It's about passing on the truth of Christ to the people around us. Actually, living a life that exalts the Lord is a spiritual ability that Christians need to have today. Why is that important for Christians today? The world we live in is changing and it's getting harder to share the good news of the gospel with others. There was a time when it was simple to spread the gospel. People used to come to church in large numbers when the gospel was preached. Actually, all the United Methodist churches even had revivers through the tent meetings. Just the setting up the setting setting up a tent attracted people. However, society is slowly becoming less welcoming to the gospel. As you know, in 1962, President Kennedy started the teaching of the Bible and the Lord's Prayer in public schools in public schools. In the future, the secular society may reject the Christi Christianity even more. So there is one way we can lead unbelievers to the church. The message of Christ doesn't just stay with us, it becomes bigger and clearer to others, others through us. Our lives become a testament to the gospel when Jesus Christ is magnified through us. When people see how we live, they should feel, feel the love of Christ and come to know Jesus Christ. <clears throat> In Korea, there are many different Christian denominations like Methodist, Presbyterians, um, Church of Nazarene, and Baptist. But there are few Lutheran churches in Korea. So I thought there were no Lutheran churches in Korea. When I came to the southern United States, I saw many <coughs> Lutheran churches. How do I learn about the Lutheran church? I came to know about the Lutheran church uh, through its members. Meeting good, meeting good Lutheran church members made me think that the Lutheran church is a good place. People don't just come to Catawba United Church, our church, just for the church event. Honestly, I think our church is doing a great job serving the community. I believe that new people will join our church when they see Jesus made important <coughs> through us. Like Mary's song, our goal is exalt Jesus Christ in all aspects of our lives. I believe people come to the Lord when they see us exalting the Lord. 
Now let's take a closer look at the contents of uh, content of a marriage song. She sings about two things that God has done for her. First, she praises God for taking care of her in her humble state. Second, she praises God for doing great things for her. Let's read Bible verse 48 to 49 from another version of the Bible. Ready to go? For, for he has worked with, with loving, loving care, care on, on the, the humble state of his maid saint servant. <laughs> For behold, from now on, all generations will count me blessed and happy and favored by God, for he is mighty, has done great things for me. <coughs> Amen. <coughs> Amen. When you think about Mary's wife, it's easy to see that she came from a humble background. Nazarene. Uh, where she was born and uh, raised was a small town with about 30 families. It was a poor village up in the mountains. She met a man named Joseph from the same neighborhood and they got engaged. Mary's praise, uh, praise for God's care in her humble state is significant for us as we all have a moment of humility in our lives. Our economic or social status doesn't necessarily define our hum uh, humble state. It may be uh, emotional or physical wounds, challenges, or situation where we feel small. Yet these humble states can lead us to encounter a Caring God, transforming our challenges into opportunity to meet our Lord Jesus Christ. So if there are no uh, humble states in our lives, we also have no opportunity to meet the caring God. I pray that you won't be discouraged in the humble states of your lives. Instead, be blessed to meet the God who cares for you. I pray that we will meet God who comes into the humble path of our lives and embrace us with His strong arms. Second, Mary prays God who is mighty and has done great things for her. What great things has God done? In the world, people might think that Winning the lottery or having a successful business is a great thing. But the Bible talks about the great things of God that surpass worldly happiness. They are even greater than worldly happiness. The Apostle Luke wrote both the Gospel of Luke and the Book of Acts. So when we look at the Book of Acts, we can see the meaning of the great things that God has done for us. Let's look at uh, Acts uh, chapter 2. Both, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. And we all hear these people speaking in our own language <coughs> about the wonderful things <coughs> God has done. The wonderful things in verse 11 is the same Greek word used in uh, great things in today's scripture. In verse 11, people are saying the wonderful things, great things God has done in different languages. But all these languages are saying the same things. The specific details of these great things uh, appears in the verse 36 at the end of the chapter 2, uh, Acts chapter 2. Therefore, could you read it together, please? Uh, just on uh, 30, verse 36, ready to go. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. this. God, God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both as Lord and Christ. Mary's praise extends beyond the birth of a child to the pro uh, profound impact of Jesus' death and resurrection, offering salvation and prompting continuous uh, praise. 
My prayer is that we can uh, be like Mary, full of joy and praise them, praising the great things of God. Even when we are in humble state, uh, our praise doesn't stop because we have experienced God doing these great things for us, to save us. To make it simple, God has done great things to save us through the life of Jesus Christ. This is the reason we can continuously praise God, not with any other reason in our lives. Please remember that God has done the great things to save us in your life. Then you can continuously praise. Um, this, is not, and this is not only reason we can praise God. If we look at the character of God who does great things, we continue to sing like Mary. Uh, let's find another verses uh, in the psalm that talks about great things God has done for us. Uh, let's read Psalm 71, verse 19 together. Ready to go? Your righteousness reaches to the skies, O God. You have done great things. Who, O God, is like you? The take of God who has done great things for us is found in verse, next verse, verse 20. Um, uh, let me read it for you. Through you have made me see troubles, many and bitter. Uh, you will restore my life from the depths of the, of the earth. You will bring me up again. He will increase my honor and comfort me again. God has done great things for us and saved us. Even in time of trouble, God restores and comforts us, holding our lives in His almighty arms. Our humble states become opportunity to experience this God's care, and His faithfulness sustains us in every situation. The Lord is faithful, and nothing is impossible if we are under His power, no matter what humble state you are in, God does not give up on your soul. He sustains you. As we conclude our reflection on Mary's song of praise, let, let's remember its powerful message for us today. Mary faced the uncertainties and, face, uh, and fears, but she found strength in praising God. In our own moment of doubt, we too can find that praising God strengthens our faith. Living a life that exalts the Lord invites us to share the truth of Christ, especially in a world resistant to the gospel. Mary's song highlights two things, God's care for our humble state and the great things He has done. Our challenges can become opportunities to encounter a caring God who lift us up. As we praise God for His great work, great things, we find assurance in His faithfulness. Uh, facing challenges today in a humble state, Praise Him for His care and the great things He has done for you. Trust that He will sustain you, lift you up, and bring comfort to your soul. May Mary's song resonate in our hearts, uh, leading us to magnify Jesus Christ in our lives. As a result, may our actions and words reflect the love we receive and become beacons of hope for others. Friends, this is all said in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <coughs> let's, this time, let's affirm our faith as found in the Apostles' Creed. Let, let us confess our faith together. Would you rise? <coughs> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the redemption of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us close our time together as we sing hymn number 245, the first Noel. <coughs>
you for the powerful message in Mary's song of praise. Help us to be inspired by her courage and obedience. Guide us through life's challenges, magnifying, magnifying your name in our actions, and empower us to share the gospel. Remind us, remind us of your great deeds. Comfort us in difficulties, and help us to trust in your sustaining power. May our lives echo Mary's song of praise and magnify Jesus Christ to those around us. Father, as we dismiss, may the peace of God the Father, the grace of Jesus the Son, the guidance and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Don't rush out. Okay. <laughs>